The following is a live copyrighted presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for RadioLawTalk.com with your host, Frederick Penny, attorney at law. And now, RadioLawTalk.com. That's right. Uh, 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 that's right. Radio Law Talk is uh, now in Pennsylvania. Thank you for the state of Pennsylvania by bringing Radio Law Talk in. You are going to have a wonderful time listening to us from here on out every single week. Thank you, Pennsylvania. Allentown specifically. Uh, I, I'm so happy we're there in Pennsylvania. I'm Fred Penny, host of Radio Law Talk. Call us at 855-LAW-RADIO or tweet us at Radio Law Talk. If you want to email us, because a lot of people listen to our podcast later on, you can go to, remember, you can always go to www.radiolawtalk.com and you can listen to our podcast. It even lists the name of what the topics are that we've gone over. But we get a lot of email, and I'm sorry if we can't always respond back to you, but uh, if you have any questions or want to make a comment or have some possible things you want us to cover, just email us at info at radiolawtalk.com, and we'll do the best we can to get back to you. But that's what we do here. Denise and I and Todd are busy practicing law, and, and it's nice that we are not just radio hosts. We actually dig in day in and day out into the law and in, in, in court and or our, our partners or our other uh, um, associates are doing the same thing. Again, uh, Cal Hunter, thank you for being here, our producer. We are in our third hour. I know we're not supposed to say it. Don't say it's the third hour. I'm, you know, I can kind of do what I want to. You know, I'm the host. So uh, we're going to do a case or no case. We love case or no case. We're going to talk about the Washington National case. Uh, that, that actually there's a they they win a case against the Orioles. We're going to talk about that. We've talked about it before, but there's an update. Uh, the Playboy reporter. Uh, we're going to talk about the legal issues of his credentials or whether or not he is allowed to come back in uh, to uh, you know basically be one of the reporters at the White House. I didn't realize the the amount of scrutiny that, that a reporter has to go through to become a credentialed reporter that can cover the White House. Everyone thinks, oh, well, hey, that's not a constitutional right. There, believe me, there's some issues here that we've gone over that we're going to talk about that's really interesting because I know the most important thing is that the Playboy reporter, that's what everybody goes there for their political news. So um, <laughs> that's, that's we've got to make sure he's in there. And then we're going to talk about one that's very important. Uh, it is a huge case that just came down. The, que- the question is, is terrorist watch list unconstitutional or constitutional? We're going to tell you what the uh, courts have said. But before that, we're going to do a case or no case, and this one's going to be fun. Cal, roll case or no case. Now it's time to play case or no case. Yay! Ooh, that sounds like a goat. Ooh, it's... Oh. No, not really. I take, I take you now to Scotland, oh. correct, where a People for Ethical Treatment of Animals advertisement claiming wool is just as cruel as fur has caused quite a stir. The PETA advert was displayed on buses around Glasgow, Scotland in February and read, Don't let them pull the wool over your eyes. Wool is just as cruel as fur. Go wool free this winter. Perhaps you've seen them. Beside the text was an image of a woman with the neck of her jumper pulled up over her face in shame because she was wearing a woolen jumper. The ad was on the side of the buses around Glasgow earlier this year, and the folks who raised sheep were nonplussed because getting a sheep shorn once a year is the proper standard of care and has to be done properly without cutting the animal's skin. It's like a haircut. And the Scottish sheepmen sought legal counsel in an attempt to stop the malicious and false ad from being used again, and they wondered if they might be in line for damages. And so I ask you, Denise Dirks, you're up first. Case or no case? <laughs> okay. Denise is taking notes and thinking, I don't want to mess up on this one. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm really down right now. Let me see. I think I think this could be a case. Um th- because the, they don't hurt the sheep. They're very careful about not hurting the sheep. And the sheep can't go with the wool and they're, you know, forever because 
It gets too big. It's cumbersome for them. They're so uncomfortable for the sheep. And it gets matted with mud and manure and other things. It has to be trimmed. I mean, that's what the sheep are. Yeah. yeah right, right, right. So I, I don't think you can compare fur to wool. I think they're different. So I'm going to say this is a real scenario, but no e- legal action was taken. Okay. All right. That's your take on it. Mr. Penny, what say you? Case yes. or no case? And, of course, I'm going to get the sound effect up again. <laughs> All i got to say, Denise, we hang out way too much. <laughs> because exactly what you said is exactly what was going through my mind. I, 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 there's nothing to say. Exactly what she said is what I was thinking and saying. This is a scenario. I bet you they're on the bus. But there's no lawsuits that came across. But... Uh, Oh my gosh, uh, this uh, uh, we're politically neutral, but sometimes I just have to shake my head, and I'm shaking my head now. Go ahead, Todd. I concur with my uh, compadre to my right, Denise Sturks. That this was no case. No case. All right, you know a real scenario, but, but no, no case. case. Denise's analysis there, kind of cause talking about the difference between wool and fur, reminded me of the joke of the chicken and the pig that were walking down the street, and they pass a restaurant that says. Today's special ham and eggs, a dollar ninety-eight. And the chicken turns to the pig and says, "Isn't it nice that your kind and my kind can get together for a meal like that?" And the pig says, "Takes a little more commitment for my kind, <laughs> because it's ham and eggs." We uh, get it, Todd. We got right, it. We so, got it. Uh, but I'm going to say, I, and both of which would be objected to by PETA. I'm going to say that this is a case because I'm so far behind. I, I can't go with you guys. Yeah. I'm going to say it is a case, but PETA does not prevail. So you're saying a case and PETA does not win in this in this that, juncture. That is okay. correct. They, okay. PETA does not lose. Okay. Well, or does, PETA, not, does not does win, not win, rather. Yeah. PETA does not win. Okay. Is PETA the plaintiff or the defendant in your scenario? The, the defendant, because the, because the bus who, who sued was the uh, the wool association saying they're putting this stuff up on the buses. Well, that, that's... A, PETA does not win. PETA, right. PETA loses. PETA okay. loses. PETA That's loses. Simple. Okay, yes. I think we got we got that figured out. Okay, well, you know, we have time to bring this to a conclusion, and so I think we're going to. And uh, let me tell you how this all came out as soon as I can uh, get back to my copy here. Uh, this is an interesting thing. For those of you who say this was a case, please raise your hand. Yeah, Denise, I knew it. For those of you who say this is a true scenario, but no case, yes. please raise your hand. Yes, I knew it. No case. Because, And I'll tell you why. Unlike the United States, now we have the Federal Trade Commission, but unlike the United States, Great Britain has an Advertising Standards Authority, or ASA, which ruled that the advertisement was misleading and that sheep weren't killed for their wool, as animals were for fur, The chairman of the National Farmers Union Livestock Board added that wool production was a natural biological process, and he says it's a fantastic value, and British farmers are highly skilled, and yada, 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 yada. And so PETA didn't lose anything except credibility when they claimed that uh, shearing a sheep was the same thing as taking the fur off of a fur-bearing animal. And they did lose some credibility there, and they had to pull the ads, but no damages were assessed, interestingly enough. I think the sheepmen were grateful that somebody called attention to their product at the wait, end of wait, the day. Wait, wait, no damages were assessed? No. Just had, Peter just had to stop airing, you know, stop using the ads. Had to take them off the bus immediately and stop from there, right? Wow, okay. that's interesting. So yeah. we've, got a, we've got about a minute left. Yeah. We're going to talk uh, next about the Washington Nationals case, uh, went against the Orioles. We're going to talk about the Playboy reporters' credentials being restored, why and what the law is on that. I'm so happy for all those people out there reading their Playboys for the uh, political, political uh, Hard-hitting stuff. political. Hard-hitting coverage. political stuff. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> play, play, Playboy's printed in Braille. That's all I'm gonna oh, say. Oh, I gotta say, <laughs> my blind uncle used to say that. Yeah, yeah that was his. Uh, That's a good wish. Joke. That's a in funny life. joke. That's all funny. I gotta say is the terrorist watch list. Is it found unconstitutional? I'm gonna let you know after this. We'll be right back. This is Radio Law Talk, and available on RadioLawTalk.com and on your favorite radio station too. We'll be right back. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. 
Warning, don't let your business get left behind in what is likely to be the biggest economic boom in recent history. If you need to build for your business to grow, call General Steel today for a pre-engineered steel building designed for your needs. No wasted space. Steel prices are expected to rise, but you can still lock in your price on a General Steel building. And you can still save as much as half the cost and time of conventional construction. As much as half. But you must call now. If you need a church building, office, warehouse, manufacturing space, retail space, or more. Call General Steel today. You can still get the General's 50-year structural warranty and General Steel quality, all at a price you can afford. So don't let rising steel prices put your project out of reach and stop you from making your company great. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. That's 800-617-9312. This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny and Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny and Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. The cost of getting rid of garbage is high, and recycling products is lucrative. If you're a business or know of a business that needs an individual compactor or baler, call Northwest Compacting at 888-201-0911. If you already have an industrial compactor, baler, or shredder and need service, don't forget to call Northwest Compacting at 888-201-0911. Northwest Compacting, your full-service industrial compacting and baling company. Read more about them at northwestcompacting.com. Many women have so many clothes in the closet, but then we go to get dressed and find we have nothing to wear. Ah! We've all been there. We all want to be comfortable and fashionable at the same time, and it's difficult to find clothing that makes that task effortless. But at Letty & Company, you can find trendy, comfortable clothing that is affordable, things you want to wear every day. Shop with a purpose online with free shipping. Just go to lettyandcompany.com. LettyandCompany.com. If you're one of those independent people who wants your own business and you love food service, we just might have a great opportunity for you. Iceberg Drive-Ins. Iceberg is famous for its thick shakes and delicious food. We lend you our supply chain and expertise, and you can potentially have a thriving, successful, fun business that your customers will love. Iceberg Drive-Ins has some prime areas available right now, so if you're interested, get in touch with us right away. Go to icebergdrivein.com and click on the Contact Us button. Iceberg Drive-In, ready to grow with you. I am Cameron Levitt, Chief Operating Officer of Concussion Medical Clinic. California's first concussion medical clinic is now open. As concussions increase each year, there has never been a greater need for concussion specialists. Our physicians at Concussion Medical Clinic are board certified in pediatric neurology and sports medicine and have partnered with universities, hospitals, and rehab clinics to expedite the recovery process. Simply put, we are elevating the standard of care. When you need an expert concussion opinion or concussion care, visit concussionmedicalclinic.com to schedule your appointment. Are you serious? You're listening to Radiolawtalk.com. And now back to your host, Frederick Penny. So a New York judge delivered a $100 million victory to the Washington Nationals against the Baltimore Orioles. Why? Let me give you a very brief history. And then Todd's the baseball guy here. It seems like uh, he does announce uh, baseball uh, games. But in, in 2005, the Nationals used to be called the Expos, right? Yeah, they were up in Montreal. That's exactly right. And so they changed to the Nationals and moved over close to the Orioles in near Washington, D.C., and they're called the Washington Nationals now. 
And that was a big issue because the Orioles had a TV agreement and this TV program, basically. It's called the Mid-Atlantic Sports Network, where the Orioles were played. But then comes in Major League Baseball saying, okay, now the Nationals are moving close by. They need some TV, too. And some, a big issue was the Orioles going, we're going to lose our viewership, right? This is the originally. So what happened from there was they had an agreement. And this is an overall view from the from the moon, and this agreement basically says we'll share some revenue, and that's what happened. So what happened after that? So the issue, one of the problems that the Orioles had with the agreement was who was going to decide the split of the revenue, and the idea was that the Major League Baseball arbitration panel would help to decide the split of the revenue here. Well. I could see why the Orioles might have a problem with that, because when the Expos were up in Montreal, they didn't have a whole lot of fan base there. Fans stopped coming. They weren't making a lot of money. And so an entity came in and actually ended up taking over ownership of the Expos. And it was Major League Baseball. (laughs) So it's sort of the fox garden, the chickens here, when they come down to say that Major League Baseball, who owns the Expos, is also going to decide how the split of money goes between the Orioles and the Expos. And there was an issue with that. And it went back and forth. um, In arbitration. In arbitration. and, And the most recent ruling was because this is the judge basically talking to the Orioles, because you can't show discrimination on its face, something is actually going on, everything you're talking about is, well, we think this could happen and this might happen and it doesn't look good. And the court said, I'm sorry, we cannot overrule the Federal Arbitration Act based upon what you think is going to happen. And if you're not showing what is actually happening, which you haven't, we we can't overturn anything and and the money goes to the the, uh, nationals nationals to a tune of $100 million. Now, Baltimore's going to appeal. They're going to take it up a notch, but they they failed, according to this judge, in meeting their burden for overturning this process. And the way there was an issue as to how they calculate the money that goes to the Nationals as compared to the Orioles, and that went before the arbitration, and basically the Nationals won. Because there's a couple of different ways... <clears throat> excuse me, to look at it. You know, the Nationals, you know, they want to put all the weight on what other teams throughout professional baseball were getting, you know, in their TV contracts and base it on that, where, you know, the Orioles were saying, yeah, that's great. We're going to take all our expenses out too, which obviously you could show anything as an expense. Yeah, it, you know, and and it's like, well, no, we're just talking about the gross amount that comes in. Let's go ahead and split it. And then you guys take care of your expenses. You shouldn't be entitled to more money because maybe the Nationals are more efficient in how they run their operations. Now that would be acting as a disincentive to a team to run it more efficiently because, oh, my gosh, if we save more money, we're not going to get as much money, which is a ridiculous proposition. Do you think that the Orioles are going to move now to Nashville or somewhere else? They're looking at Nashville, maybe going to uh, yeah. Tennessee. Yeah. Because they, they split this this jurisdiction in half by putting the Nationals in there, and the Orioles have not made as much money as a result of that. Two things they got to look at at Nash uh, look at with Nashville. One, is the fan base big enough to support a pro baseball team there? I will tell you that within two or three hundred miles of Nashville, there are a lot of minor league ball clubs, minor league affiliates, and so that's that going to affect it. them. They mm-hmm. could feed it, but also may affect those minor league ball clubs for other teams may have to go elsewhere because they're going to lose their fan base. The second thing is, are they encroaching on any other territory, which in Nashville I don't believe they are. I think what the closest one might be, what, Cincinnati, Chicago, Atlanta, yeah, it's far um, away. I, I don't think it's going to be an issue there. Because you got the Tennessee Titans there. So now if you put the Orioles there, do they have a basketball team? They, they don't. They have a hockey team. Hockey team. So, you know. Okay, so here's the thing. If the Orioles want to be successful, they have to build a winning team. And they have been horrible at building a winning team. Remember the late great quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers, John Brody, said, Fans in San Francisco are like fans everywhere else. They'll support their team win or tie. That's exactly right. <laughs> Win or tie. That's exactly right. right. Well, we're going to be That's following good. up with this yeah, later. And, but. and to, to Cal's point, there's a guy named Larry Lacino. He's an owner of the Boston Red Sox now. 
Lucchino was worth the Orioles and got Camden Yards built. Then he went to San Diego, and he got the stadium built down there. And then he went to Boston and brought a title to Boston for the first time since the early 1900s. The formula that he did to get all of that was he produced a winning ball club. And when he did, the municipalities were all about giving him the money. That's what they need to do. And all of a sudden, attendance problems went away. All of the revenue issues went away. You know, winners draw money, losers not so much. That's true. You're exactly right. All right. We're going to move on to the judge ordering Trump to restore the reporter for Playboy's uh, credentials. Now, look. What people don't realize, a lot of people, I didn't even until I studied up on this, the credentials, and and this is a little bit down Cal's alley, is the credentials to get into the White House as a reporter is very difficult. There, you've got to go through this background check. You have to go through a committee. There, I mean, you just don't go get a credential. Your whatever your business is or, or your uh, newspaper is, it's got to be fairly substantial. Um, and this individual, by the name of Brian Kareem, is an, an individual that is a correspondent for Playboy. Now, what happened was he got in a little dispute. What he said is something that. They're claiming, and don't forget, they can't just come in there and cause issues. They can't yell. They can't scream. The reporters, um, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later about what other presidents, by the way, have kicked out reporters. Everyone thinks this is a Trump thing. There's two other presidents that have kicked reporters out, and we're going to talk about that. But And believe it or not, everyone's like, well, this is a... This is an issue of, for, uh, of, of, of freedom of the press. No, it's not. This is not a freedom of the press issue. We're going to discuss why it's not when we come back because we're running out of time. We'll be right back. You're listening to Radio Law Talk. Stay tuned. There's much more of this coming up. Do not go away. You won't want to miss a second of it. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. Hi, my name is Lily. My mom and dad used to fight about money all the time. Then one day, I heard them talking about this guy. Some uncle I never knew called Uncle Sam. Well, they say this Uncle Sam guy wanted them to pay him like a gazillion dollars. And they didn't have a gazillion dollars. So they called this company they heard on the radio called The Tax Doctor. And The Tax Doctor worked with Uncle Sam's people. I think they're called the IRS. And they're able to work it out so my mom and dad didn't have to pay Uncle Sam very much money at all. So now mom and dad are happy. And I'm happy too. Thanks, Tax Doctor. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, call now and pay less. 800-263-2610. 800-263-2610. 800-263-2610. 800-263-2610. That's 800-263-2610. Warning, don't let your business get left behind in what is likely to be the biggest economic boom in recent history. If you need to build for your business to grow, call General Steel today for a pre-engineered steel building designed for your needs. No wasted space. Steel prices are expected to rise, but you can still lock in your price on a General Steel building. And you can still save as much as half the cost and time of conventional construction. As much as half. But you must call now. If you need a church building, office, warehouse, manufacturing space, retail space, or more, call General Steel today. You can still get the General's 50-year structural warranty and General Steel steel quality, all at a price you can afford. So don't let rising steel prices put your project out of reach and stop you from making your company great. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. That's 800-617-9312. Know someone with a drinking or drug problem? Learn how to get sober after we share these stories. I was 35 with two beautiful children when my life and addiction started to spiral out of control. After my divorce, I went into a depression cycle and started drinking more often and using prescription drugs. After my second DWI and arrest, my ex-husband threatened to take our children away from me. I was 17 when I became addicted to heroin and meth. I thought I could quit on my own, but I couldn't. It hit me when I was arrested. Get sober now. Your private insurance may cover costs and we'll get you here. It's simple. Just call Elite Rehab Placement right now. 
Please, don't wait. Your life matters to us. 800-918-1376. 800-918-1376. 800-918-1376. That's 800-918-1376. I'm going to quick quack car wash, get my car washed, make it quick quack, pretty shiny, sexy, just because I want to don't drive dirty, going to get my car suds in the quick quack car wash. It's the quick quack, quickest and the cleanest by far, we're talking three skinny minutes sitting right in your car, wash a hundred feet of cloth, washing your car at the quick quack car wash. Any Honda, Mazda, Ford, or Chevy, Sauber, Cadillac, quick whack will spruce her up just like that. You'll be happy, looking snappy, you'll be glad you was at the quick whack. Car wash it on the web and go to don'tdrivedirty.com and see where you got your closest quick whack in the local area. Get in your car, get in your truck. Get on the road and come visit the dock at the Quick Quack Car Wash, where your car will always leave happy, guaranteed. They take pride in being clean and green by conserving and recycling the water they use only at the Quick Quack Car Wash. Quack Quack. Most of my family, they never graduated high school or even let alone go to college, so I'm trying to break that barrier. My daughter, Brooklyn, was also a motivation for me to go back to school. Every day after work, went straight to school, studied hard, and... And it paid off. At age 26, Kareem finished his high school diploma. I could not have done it alone. I feel like if I didn't have anyone to push me, I wouldn't have bothered to do it. I got one milestone down the drain, and now I got to work on the next. I see the future is really bright for me. I feel like it doesn't matter the age, as long as you go back and get it done. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence, and now I feel unstoppable. No one gets a diploma alone. You have more support than you realize. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Radio Law Talk. I like that show. This is Radio Law Talk. And now, back to the show. Uh, We're talking about a Playboy uh, reporter by the name of Brian Kareem, who whose credentials were per- pulled by the Trump administration. And, and, you know, look, we hate to go off on tangents, but we did, we were off air talking about uh, the difference in the 70s when I was growing up. Uh, I still remember going to... <laughs> <laughs> my mom is, we're coming from a very, uh, you know, religious family, and my mom would bring me into this little old place, it's an old town, and get my hair cut for the first time, and I remember sitting down in the corner of the barbershop, and there's a couple old guys sitting there waiting for their hair to be cut, and Playboy's all over the place, and everyone's reading them. My mom grabs me, and this is not, this is actually true, grabs me and pulls me out of there, and we... Oh, okay, Mom. And you know, picture this little eight-year-old boy walking. And she goes down to the next guy, I, and I remember their names, Barbara Willie and Barbara Bill. <laughs> and sure enough, I'm taking you to the other barber. Took <laughs> Barbara Bill, sat down in the corner, playboys all <laughs> over the place. My mom took me out of that one. I was like, why don't you just cut my own hair, Mom? <laughs> you know? But that was the way it kind of was in the 70s. It was interesting. But this is a playboy reporter that does the political parts of Playboy uh, does the political articles, was kicked out for supposedly being uh, unruly. And this is what we have to note down. Let me read before we get into what happened here. Let me read what the court has said because the court gave him back his credentials and everyone thinks, well, wait a minute. You know, this is a constitutional issue. It is not a constitutional issue. This is what it is. And this is this is an important quote. Uh, was this from the justices, basically? I mean, the, the judges, you said, uh, that the decision explicitly does not reach the First Amendment issue at play. Instead, it's Kareem's allegation that his due process was violated through a lack of notice about the decorum or how he was supposed to act that carried the day. The judge that basically did not conclude you know, whether or not this was a First Amendment issue. The issue was whether or not he had due process. Denise. Right, and due process means fair notice in the beginning that if he does these type of acts, then 
he is going to be subject to having his press pass pulled, right? Due process also is once he gets his press pass pulled, what process does he get to challenge that? So it's a two-step kind of a due process issue. And this, they never had to reach the issue of whether or not it impacted his right to free speech or any of those other issues because the due process one came first and it was decided. And it was decided in favor of Kareem. And Kareem did bad acts. There's no question. And what the White House tried to argue was that because they kicked out Acosta before, that the when they sent the letter to Acosta saying, this is why you were kicked out. This um, is prior to this. This instance. is prior to this case. And Acosta got his press back, pass back. Um, the judge in the Acosta case said it was just too vague as to what why he was kicked out. So you can't do this. And now the White House said we sent it out about the Acosta and we made that a public memo. So this guy, Kareem, knew what he was doing, and it was against Acosta, and the court rejected that. So, so really quickly, in the Acosta case, uh, Jim Acosta with uh, CNN was had his past temporarily suspended and then reinstated because he challenged it because the allegation was that when a staffer went to go grab the microphone away from after President Trump wanted to move on, the claim was that he had brought his hand down in a chopping motion that was assaultive in some way. Regardless of whether that is true or not true, according to what Denise is saying, he was entitled to notice about what the proper conduct was and then whether or not that actually violated that code before that happened. In this case here... It was a Trump staffer that responded to Gorka, um, or not Gorka, Kareem. Kareem. Kareem said something along the lines of, quote, this is a group of people that are eager for demonic possession. And this was in a group. And Gorka, the Trump staffer, responded saying, you're a journalist, right? At which point Kareem said, Something along the lines of, you want to step outside and handle this? That could, yeah, you could deal with it here, or we'll deal with it out there, and, something and like that. And that could be construed as a threat or fighting. Mm-hmm. It, it could not be. It could be. It's up in the air, but the administration viewed it as that, and that's what they pulled it for. And I kind of agree with the court's ruling that, l- look, you got to spell out what a person did, and they're entitled under due process. Because if, if this goes through then the press pass is taken away and the First Amendment right is encroached. And and much like a previous case that we had talked about, it's not that the judge is saying that he had this right or didn't have this right and was exercising it correctly. The judge is saying, no, this is the process you have to follow. It's a vague standard you yeah. put out there. Right. you got to follow this standard if you want to do that. And, and what's important here was this was um, not a press um, meeting of the press. This was a meeting at the White House of a bunch of individual press members um, and other members that are talking about uh, what was it they were talking about? The oh my gosh, I can't remember what it was. It, first, it, it involved it's, First no, Amendment. No, I had, issues. I thought it had something to do with. I just had it on the tip of my tongue and I forgot. Well, anyway, uh, so there's differences between when you're in the press room and when you're just in an event. Right. So there's different standards for the press on those two different occasions. And Kareem's standard was when he was at an event, whereas Acosta standard was when he was in the press room. And, and it was shortly following what's called a social media summit was. where they there had bloggers and celebrities there. And they were having this this after summit get together in the Rose Garden. And press members were there on the fringes wanting to ask questions. And that's where it all started. And it's sort of the equivalent of locker room talk until they start asking questions. And then it becomes, again, back to their official function, why they were in the White House in the first place. I wanted to point out, too, that local reporters, when there's a president or presidential candidate visiting, they have to have their background screened and all of that stuff as well. And if a judge denies there's no time to have a hearing. You're just not going to cover them. Right. So there can be, and, and those rulings can be arbitrary. They can be for any reason that they decide. Secret Service, White House, anybody can pull the chain on that. Well, here's two interesting things I found about this. The first thing is the judge, though, ordered, look, you know, you you have to give them due process, said, I quote, however, he's talking about the, uh, the reporter here, uh, however... Quote, I'm not sure I'd go so far to say he dealt with the situation 
the best that he could. In other words, he wasn't too happy, or she wasn't too happy. It was a woman judge. She wasn't too happy how he handled the situation. The 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 Playboy's uh, how Kareem handled yeah. Kareem, the Playboy report. Playboy yeah. report. Absolutely, okay, now, he was guilty of some misconduct for right, sure. Right now, here's the other issue. Everyone says, "Oh my gosh, this is this is a Trump, a dang Trump." You know, Trump doesn't want it. Trump's anti. Well, two other presidents have done this. Did you know that? Nixon did it. Nixon did it during the time when he was having these these issues uh, with uh, you know the wa- the the Watergate, all that issue. He the Washington Post he banned. He also banned uh, a number of other credentials from people that he didn't like, and and that became an issue during Nixon's time. And during the Obama administration, shocker, shocker, Obama did not allow the Washington Post, no, the Washington Times, the New York Post, or the Dallas Morning News on Air Force One during a trip, but he allowed Ebony and Glamour to come on. And so that was a big issue, but it was kind of swept under the rug. And he argued, well, you know, well, he did allow eventually Fox to come on, who was generally what he would say was more conservative type of news uh, casting. But 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 it's happened before. This is not the first time. Yeah, but, now but, he didn't pull that. Let me back up. I just want to. He didn't pull their credentials. He just didn't allow them to come on. So no, it's not, you're right. It's, it's not, different for the application process versus yes, pulling it. But if everyone yes. thinks this is the first time that a president has beefed and not allowed certain uh, people with credentials to come in, that has happened before. Primarily to block their critics or people who spin the tone of coverage in a way they don't like. That's That just has been used as, this was the Nixon tool. Yes. And yes. this was the Obama tool as well. Uh, and in Trump, there was just this guy that or Gorka never had liked. Now Gorka's out of, he's out of there. He has well, his Trump's own radio Well, Trump's done show something now. different that everybody's kind of ignoring. He did a massive purge. Um, and got rid of some people, oppressed people that had been there for 21, 30 years. Which is his right, by the way. They <clears throat> come in at the pleasure of the president unless there's some reason for them not to. Well, that's not yeah. true necessarily. But, but they I'm have to have a process. Court, you know, now the courts have ruled not, but I'm saying. Well, no, no, the courts yeah. have ruled. No, that's not true. The courts have just ruled you have to go through a process. Yes. Okay. That's all. And so, so Trump yes. can, but you have to go through the process, Trump. And the issue of whether or not it's constitutional has not come up. That's not an issue. Right. So, and yes, it, but but again, it's not Trump's not the only one. He's just doing it much harsher and a much different way, like what Denise is trying to bring up. Yeah. Um, Obama was pretty smart in the way he did. He just quietly. He said, did no. it by different events. Yeah. He kind of yeah. like kept, really kept it small like that. But Trump has actually purged people. Okay, we'll be back. We're going to talk more law. We're glad you're listening to Radio Law Talk, and we hope you'll continue our final segments coming up, including quick takes, and you don't want to miss them. That's all next on the final segment of Radio Law Talk. As an 18-year-old, I let my mistakes kind of take over my life. I was 0.5 credits away from completing high school, and I didn't do it. Ten years later, at age 28, Jackie finished her high school diploma. When I found out that I was pregnant, I know that I had to do something for myself if I wanted to make her a better person and provide a better life for her. My family never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew what I could become and who I could become as a person. My support team is amazing. The educational director, my sister, and even my seven-year-old daughter has just been more than the support that I could ask for. I've been given an opportunity, and I'm just thankful for it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. If you're one of those independent people who want your own business and you love food service, we just might have a great opportunity for you. Iceberg Drive-Ins. Iceberg is famous for its thick shakes and delicious food. We lend you our supply chain and expertise, and you can potentially have a thriving, successful, fun business that your customers will love. Iceberg Drive-Ins has some prime areas available right now, so if you're interested, get in touch with us right away. Go to icebergdrivein.com and click on the Contact Us button. Iceberg Drive-In. Ready to grow with you. 
Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. Many women have so many clothes in the closet, but then we go to get dressed and find we have nothing to wear. Ah! We've all been there. We all want to be comfortable and fashionable at the same time, and it's difficult to find clothing that makes that task effortless. But at Letty & Company, you can find trendy, comfortable clothing that is affordable, things you'll want to wear every day. Shop with a purpose online with free shipping. Just go to lettyandcompany.com. LettyandCompany.com. I knew I had a problem, but I didn't know what to do about it. I tried counting calories, I took pills, eating and eating, and then more eating. I really wanted to stop, but nothing could make me stop. At one point, it was so bad that I just felt like giving up. I felt so alone. Like nobody else could possibly understand. We understand. We're Overeaters Anonymous, and we have helped thousands of people just like you. People who want to stop their compulsive eating and start living a healthy, rewarding life. Overeaters Anonymous, help me get my life back. Now I eat in a way that's healthy and good for me. I never realized what I was missing out on. With OA, I am living again and loving it. Start living the life you deserve with help from Overeaters Anonymous. Find us on the web. Is this real life? This is Radio Law Talk with Frederick Penny. Did you know the United States government has a watch list and a no-fly list for terrorism? You guys knew that? Yes. Okay. Now, what's interesting is this watch list... uh, has grown over the years, I believe, through population. And everybody thinks, oh, this is just for the people that are here in the United States. But no, it's for everyone. There's people outside the United States are in this watch list. And as Denise uh, correctly pointed out, the the no-fly list is a much smaller nucleus of the large watch list. Now, the watch list at, at approximately 2013 had about 680,000 people on the watch list. And that's the, the FBI and the government has this private watch list that they're watching people. Uh, as of June 2017, there's over 1.16 million people on the watch list. Now, this is what people are saying. Uh-oh, there's some issues here. What's the watch list? And is, do, uh, do I have constitutional rights not to be on the watch list? Because I can't argue, hey, I shouldn't be on the watch list. Well, you know, first of all, you can argue as the government, well, just because you're on the watch list doesn't mean you're liable for anything and there's no harm. But believe it or not, I was wrong, Todd, when I went over the details. Only 4,600 of the 1,160,000 watch list members are U.S. citizens. So a very, very small amount are U.S. citizens. The rest are outside the U.S. citizens. So what happened recently is a group of two dozen, almost two dozen Muslim U.S. Uh, citizen brought a lawsuit against the fe- in federal court against the um, FBI and other government entities saying that it... it violated their constitutional right uh, as citizens because, you know, we, we, we basically can't, we have no rights to go fight you or, or even know that we're on a watch list and say, hey, this is not, this is, this is, uh, th- there's no proof that we should be on this watch list and that some of them, and the proof came out and the government didn't even fight this, these, this proof that they were being targeted when they're going through airports and pulled aside these actual, uh, some of these Muslim U.S. citizens 
and held up and, and had extra watch lists. So, I mean, it had extra scrutiny. And that, and, and that came before the courts. And this is, again, this is a district court. So it's just started for the Eastern District. Judge Anthony uh, Terenga ap- absolutely gave them a, uh, a checklist, and they won. And, uh, and the court held that that was unconstitutional to have these people on a watch list. So what is going to happen here? This is interesting. It, it's it's very similar to what we we're talking about due process rights. First, you have to have notice of why you're being put on the list, right? Or that you're even being put on the list. And then secondly, there has to be some process by which you can challenge you being put on this list. And the government was trying to keep it all internal in, a, in an administrative setting saying, wait, you can't challenge this in the court. You guys have to challenge this through administrative remedies. And you have to exhaust all your administrative remedies before you can take it to court. And the court rejected that. So, uh, Fred, you... yeah, yeah. One one quick sure. comment. What you've got to understand on that. My question about that is, okay, if it's the like the judge says, it's a due process. You got to be put on notice that you're on the watch list. Remember, how many are U.S. citizens? Forty six hundred. Are they going to go to Iran or Iraq or Afghanistan and say, I got to put you on notice, whoever you are? Or I'm not just using those countries because it's other countries. There's, you know, in, in Bangladesh or wherever, uh, terrorists. Are we going to put you on notice? Oh, you don't know. We should. Do we have to go to Bangladesh to remind they don't someone? Have, don't foreigners don't have constitutional rights? Right. That's my that's my argument. Yeah. So we're looking at the forty six hundred people should have been that our citizens should have been afforded their constitutional rights. But the courts did not say that they just said in general so are they oh, well I, my understanding is it's in generally speaking and again i'm not going to be quoted but i thought that's what they meant was all these 1.1 1. 1 or 5 million people no 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 know. because the plaintiffs were all u.s muslim citizens okay. so, so the group them. is yeah so the group that the the court was responding to is a limited group the 4600 because there's 4600 yes. that are citizens okay yes Got but the it. the to me, the issue here is how is the list being used and and in what way does the list violate your constitutional rights? I don't know that a list by itself necessarily does, but look at the way it's being used. I want to read something to you here. This is the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution. The right of the people to be secure in their person, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. Okay? And... Warrants shall issue on prob- only on probable cause. So if, if a cop says, hey, stop, come here, that's a detention. And they have to have reasonable suspicion that a crime has occurred or is about to occur in order to detain you. Now, we're talking about folks, because of this list, who their claim would be had the audacity to purchase a plane ticket, go through screening and are pulled aside where they're subject to complete searches of their person, place, uh, personal effects, all of that, that are clearly searches. And the question here is, what reasonable suspicion exists to allow that? Right. And and why do we have this infringement of a group of people? Now, the government would come back and say, well, look, the law is facially neutral, okay? But the problem is it's discriminatory in its effect because there's a certain class of people that seems to get called out and screened more than others. Or taken off flights. That was also part of their, their um, complaints. That, that, that's right. Mm-hmm. And so, so when you don't know, A, the criteria that even exists to get your name on the list— how do you challenge anything, and how is your due process? These rights cannot be abrogated unless you are given due process. And how can this occur in order to in order to allow you to ha- challenge your name being on the list that causes you to be subject right. to this? Well, this? I realize it's only 4,600 people, but still, look, the rights exist just as important for one as they do the masses. So right. This- Oh, go ahead, go ahead. And, and the rights that the court was talking about was travel-related and reputational liberty interests. And what that means, well, first of all, we got the Commerce Clause. Yes. And the Commerce Clause says, you know, you, you can't impact commerce. Well, these people are traveling. That is one part of commerce. And then the reputational liberty rights are a person's right to know their reputation and right to their reputation and to control their reputation. Absolutely. So the court said, quote, the court concludes that the risk of erroneous deprivation of plaintiffs, travel-related and reputational liberty interest is high. And the currently 
existing procedural safeguards are not sufficient to address that risk. Yeah. And then the FBI comes back and argues, but the difficulties suffered by these plaintiffs pale in comparison to the government's interest in combating terrorism and the safety of its citizens. Now, So there's the two arguments. And, and, and yeah. to me, look, I get that. I get that. But to me, that's a dangerous argument. To say that we should be able to do things that abrogate the rights, the individual rights of citizens under the greater good theory being that we that safety and security. Look, I'm going to get philosophical here, but there were a lot of people during the Revolutionary War whose blood was spilled on the altar of freedom. Freedom is the greater good. And to, and to have things that come out under the guise of providing more security, well, they were... This all happened for the purposes of freedom, and and that's what needs to be protected. The court has asked, what kind of remedy can be fashioned to adequately protect the citizens' constitutional rights while not unduly compromising public safety? I think the question should be asked the other way around. What sort of remedy can be fashioned to not unduly compromise public safety while protecting the right in the Constitution to freedom. I mean, that's what needs to be safeguarded is freedom to see how everything else works out. But we'll follow this to see what happens going forward. Are you thinking if freedom is terms of liberty, correct? Absolutely. Okay, good. I wanted to just, you know, suggest that because that's real important for us to doubt. Yep. That's a great point. Now it's time for quick takes. And Fred, I think you have yours out. What is your quick take? All I got to say is I'm glad uh, the Playboy reporter, Brian Kareem, got his credentials back because... Everyone I know goes to Playboy to get their latest political news, and now they can do it. Right or left, exactly. Political news. Todd Kunin, what is yours? Tony the Tiger, Mr. Frosted Flakes himself. (laughs) Certainly not the answer I would use if somebody was to ask me to describe myself using the name of a popular breakfast cereal. Nope. Frosted Flake here. And Denise Dirks, your quick take? Uh, Freedom of the press means the White House must have a process to get the press pass and have a process to challenge the revocation of the press pass. That's due process. Hey, thanks for joining us. We had a great time. Todd, Denise, and I, we're signing off till next week. Thanks, Cal, for producing our show. Anytime. And, of course, we thank all of you for listening and remind you this is a live show Saturdays, 9 to noon Pacific, but available via podcast all the time at RadioLawTalk.com. And we thank you so much for listening. You have been listening to RadioLawTalk.com, a copyrighted presentation of Radio Law Talk Incorporated.